Good evening, everyone. You can be seated. Thank you. Right, good evening everyone and welcome members and the members of the general public to the uh, 26th of July 2003 council meeting. Can I ask members when speaking to speak directly into the microphone and, be, and so it enables people in the gallery to be able to hear you and it also is good for the recorder. Can I remind members to place their mobile phones to silent and to stand where possible when speaking? You will be using the new electronic system, voting system this evening for report and motion recommendations. A guide was sent to all members and has also been tabled this evening can you please fam familiarise yourself with this voting system? And say I managed to do it this afternoon, I must be the crash dummy, so I'm sure you'll all get on with it fine. Can I remind members to remain seated at the end of the meeting until I have risen to conclude the meeting? Can I also remind those members who wish to speak this evening to keep their hands up and until they are acknowledged by the chief exec? Reverend Ga uh, Canon Bar Darren Barlow has sent his apologies for this evening. Before I progress to this meeting, may I take this opportunity to remind the Chamber that the meeting is being live streamed and we welcome the members of the public in the gallery watching and listening to the Council meeting tonight. I would like to remind all members to observe the Council's adopted con code of conduct for councillors, which is expected by all members. Here we go. Right, I have received apologies from, for absence this evening from Councillor Tandy. Are there any other council leader? No. Councillor Kent? No. Anyone else? Right. Um, I move that the minutes of the meeting of the 28th of June 2023 Council be approved as a correct record. Is that seconded? And is any member in disagreement with the accuracy of these meetings? Councillor Spate. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just a point, I did send it through to the Democratic Services Officer uh, but in reports from outside bodies, I did speak about an outside body um, at the last meeting, so I'd just like that noted. I will be speaking again later in the meeting. No. Noted, Councillor Spate, thank you. Um, so, is, is the accuracy of the minutes correct? And do I have a proposer and a seconder? Councillor the leader and second by Councillor Snell. Thank you. These minutes are approved. Right, I'm going to pop those over to you for a minute because I get my nerves. One, one item of urgent business was requested by Councillor Neil Spate this evening, and I have considered the request alongside the advice from the monitoring officer. I have declined the request for this council meeting. I am aware that Councillor Spate has been advised he can raise this item at the next council meeting. Well, um, what would you like to say, Neil? Sorry, Councillor uh, Spate. I, I, I believe the item that I raised is incredibly important to this council. Um, members are aware, because I've circulated to all members exactly what we're talking about. It relates to planning. And before this council next meets in full session at the end of September... Councillor Spate, yes, I 
do realise, and I have read it, but I'm not going to take it as urgent. We, uh, urgent. we have... Hang on, Councillor You asked speak. me to speak, Madam Mayor. No, you asked me if you could speak, and I said very quickly, but OK. So, Councillor Spate, I am aware of what it is, and I'm sure it will be um, sorted sooner than rather than later. So, thank you, Councillor Spate. Madam Mayor, I'm not there going any, to, uh, I am not going to sit down unless you allow me to speak, as you invited me to Count speak. Councillor Spate. You invited me to speak. I, you had put your hand up, and I said, was it just a quick comment? I think I'm going to get a dialogue, and you've already told okay. me... Hang on, Councillor Spate, I'm speaking. You've already told me that you have emailed everyone and told them of what you wanted to talk about, and they're quite easy to read. So I don't think we need to go into it now. Well, you so may thank not, you, but members Spate. do. Democracy is dead in this chamber. So will you... <laughs> right. Are there any declarations of interest to be made this evening by any councillor? Thank you. Before I invite the leader of the councillor, council to speak, I would like us to take a moment and remember Thurrock's Fallen of World War II on page seven of the agenda. William Seeley, Eric White, John Taylor, Arthur Murrell, James Adams, John Hutchinson, and Wilfred Nichols. Thank you. I will now invite the leader to make his announcements. Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this week I was joined by the chair of the Clean and Greener ONS uh, Committee, Councillor Val Morris Cook, where we joined the crews out collecting food waste as part of our pilot test. The Environmental Act of 2021 means that all local authorities throughout the country will need to introduce separate weekly food waste collections. And by carrying out this pilot, we are getting prepared for that. I think I can say that we were both impressed by the dedication and enthusiasm with which the crews were carrying out this pilot, engaging with residents to hear their thoughts on how we might better the collection service. I was pleased to receive news from Roger Hurst this week, our Police, Fire and Crime Commissioner, who's made funding available for the police to carry out additional high visibility patrols in areas experiencing issues with antisocial behaviour. One of these patrols will take place around Lakeside and Chafford 100 Station. This is part of a joint working approach where we provided information to the PFCC to make sure that the patrols we established in the areas, we felt that they could have the greatest impact. It is pleasing to report that in terms of crime, Figures from Essex Police show that there has been a significant reduction in antisocial behaviour and violent crime incidents reported in the last 12 months, leading up to June 2023. ASB dropped by 28%, while violent crime are down by 8%. However, I do know from conversations with the Commissioner, he is determined to go further and appreciates that often it's the perception of crime is far greater than the, than the crimes that are taking place. And he knows these needs to be tackled with greater visibility of police on our streets, thereby reassuring residents. I would like to just clarify one thing here because it has been questioned, I have been asked about this, and that's you, Les. Whilst I'm leader of this council, we will not be putting you, Les, signs or cameras on any land that is owned by Thurrock. And I would now call upon the champion of Lulez, Sadiq Khan, the Labour Mayor of London, to actually rethink his proposals, stop the introduction of the ULES, and come back and speak to people, particularly those people in Thurrock that we most hardest hit by this, quite frankly, heinous, heinous tax on motorists. Finally, this Friday is the start of Love Parks Week. There's lots going on in our parks this summer. Our Active Parks programme will bring organised fun and games for children at different parks every Tuesday in August. I would encourage members to visit the parks to see for themselves the activities. And if anyone interested in joining in, there's more information can be found on our website. Thank you.
Thank you, Leader. Um, I now will be taking questions from members of the public. I will, there are two questions that have been submitted and accepted by the monitoring officer this evening. These are set out on page 23 of your agendas. For the benefit of the recording of this meeting, I would ask that the questionnaire read out their question when asked to do so. I would... Councillor Spate, have you got a point of order? Yes, I have, Madam Mayor. You were very quick to shut me down earlier on, and that's fine, that's your prerogative. The leader has just made a political statement. He didn't make an announcement of fact or whatever. It was a political statement about your lives. As it happens, I agree with him, but he should not be making political statements in that section of the meeting. Councillor Spate, unfortunately, if you look at the Constitution, that isn't, in my belief, a point of order. So I'm sorry if you'd like to find it in the Constitution, but I don't think it is. Thank you. Uh, for the benefit, right, let's get back to the questions. Oh, hang on. S sorry, Madam Mayor, just quickly, I missed declarations of interest. Um, I've got a declaration of interest on a, a men, uh, agenda item 17. Uh, it was just, a, I'm an employee of DP Wells. Uh, so I have to declare that. Thank you. Sorry, everyone. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Um, so... I would like also to inform the person asking the question that any supplementary question, can I just get past this bit, that they may ask in the form of a statement and must be related to the original question of the answer that is given. Councillor Allen, you had your hand up. Have you got a point of order? Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Now, I'd, I'd, I'd like to touch on the ASB side of... Uh no, I'm sorry, Councillor Allen. Hang on, Councillor Allen, this is not the right time. I've gone to, uh, to questions. So, thank you. Mr Groves, good evening. If you'd like to make your way through to the public <coughs> microphone and read out, welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, bearing in mind the last local plan for Thurrock was published in 1997, when will the new local plan be published? Councillor Bainey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr Gross, for your question. Uh, Madam Mayor, it's intended that a report will be brought before full council this autumn, following which a consultation on the draft local plan will uh, follow shortly afterwards. A pre-submission local plan consultation is intended for autumn 2024 with the aim of submitting the plan to the Secretary of State for examination in public in early 2025. Thank you, Councillor Maney. Mr Groves, would you like to ask another question? Thank you very much, yes. Um, in principle, um, would, um, would the portfolio holder um, support the production of neighbourhood plans in various communities across Thurrock? Councillor Maney, may I have a response? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I would welcome the broadest possible engagement in the local plan. It's the only way to ensure that we capture the views of everybody. This, this document is going to shape our growth and our regeneration for years to come. So if that's one way of making sure that we include neighbourhoods and communities in that process, I would endorse that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Maney. Mr Groves, would you like to go back to your seat? Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Austin. Would you like to come forward to speak? Thank you, good evening. Um, in the interest of openness and transparency, and to alleviate the concerns the Tilbury Towns Fund plan even fulfilled the required criteria, can the new leader of the council update Tilbury residents on the current status of the Towns Fund, including what funding has already been approved and received? Leader of the Council, please. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Austin, for your question. In June 2021, 
the Government announced allocations for 101 town funds bids across England. Thurrock Council was successful with two bids in both Tilbury and Greys. The allocation for Tilbury was up to £22.8 million. The bid included proposals for a new built youth zone and a community hub and adult education skills centre being refurbished under an underutilised council owned building. Improved connections between Tilbury Town and the station and the waterfront and the pontoon extension to Tilbury Landing Stage to open up the potential for a new ferry. These projects were developed under the guidance of the Tilbury Town Board. Business case summaries were submitted to the Department of Leveling Up Housing and Communities in the autumn of last year. These have now been approved and the projects are now being developed to detailed design level. The Youth Zone project is also being supported by the Freeport Board. Detailed design and cost planning has been progressed by the on-site youth centres who will deliver the project and planning application has been submitted and validated. Mr Austin, have you a supplementary question? Yes, please. Um, every couple of years or, or when it's convenient, Tilbury residents are told Tilbury, re Tilbury needs love. The Tilbury Towns Fund is intricately linked with our Tilbury IMC. Uh, we had confirmation last week that our integrated medical centre that residents have been waiting seven years for is now no longer deemed affordable. We used our Tilbury Towns Fund money to evict the community services who are using the facilities, demolished it, fenced it off and surrounded it with pretty pictures and representations. A less expensive and more common sense approach would have left the building and services in situ until we were ready for the land. Given the composition of the board, the need for further community engagement and to salvage what is left of this project as cost efficient as possible, would the leader of the council support suspending all Tilbury Towns Fund business and financial obligations until a full analysis and consultation on ongoing projects can take place? Thank you, Mr. Austin, the leader. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Austin, for your supplementary question. No, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, simple answer, um, suggest the suspension of the board. These projects are being advanced. They will be for the benefit of the people of Tilbury. It's incredibly disappointing um, that the um, NHS have decided that they're not going to um, or potentially not progress with the IMC centre. I, I'm hopeful that, that something else can come out of this so we can provide some sort of medical um, facility for the, the people of Tilbury. But as I said, these, these, um, these things are well progressed. They will benefit the people of Tilbury and they do clearly demonstrate the love that we feel for Tilbury. Thank you, Mr. Austin. Would you like to make your way back to the public gallery? Thank you for your question. Item seven, petitions from members of the public and councillors. Please be advised that in accordance with the councillors' petition scheme, two notices of petition have been received. Firstly, can I ask Councillor Polly to present her petition? You have three minutes to speak. Can I ask that you hand your, then hand your petition into members' democratic services? Thank you, Councillor Polly. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, I've received a, a petition from the residents of um, Cam Green in Bellis and uh, associated roads such as Brock and uh, Avon regarding the caretaker services that they re receive on their blocks. Um, they have asked for more consultation on the level of on the service level agreement and on future charging. I have the uh, petition with me here. I have consulted with the residents. They're happy for me to present it. And uh, we are actually doing a board walk tomorrow with the residents to, uh, to deal with some of their issues. But the, the, their request with the um, petition is that going forward, they are uh, consulted in more detail. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Polly. Um, Councillor Johnson, as portfolio holder, you have one minute to acknowledge and speak about this petition. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for the petition, uh, Councillor. 
uh, I see no reason why we can't extend the consultation, but I will need to speak to the director first just to make sure that everything is, or how far everything has got at the moment, but consultation is, is king. We need to have it as much as we can. So fundamentally, I don't see any problem. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Um, Mr. Coombs to speak, approximately three minutes. Sorry, I'll wait, I'll wait till you get to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Coombs. You have three minutes to speak about your petition. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Ian Comb, and my contact details are attached to the petition. The petition is for a 20 mile per hour uh, speed limit on West Road, Tamnish Road, and all of the Flowers Estate in South Ockenden. The petition has over 150 signatures. The Flowers Estate Residents Group has listened to its members and the petition supports their fears and comments. West Road and Benyon School. Benyon Junior School in Tyson Place is accessed from West Road. Many children attending Benyon School live on the Flowers Estate. The speed limit on West Road is 30 miles per hour, but cars and lorries don't keep to the limit. The lorries use West Road to go to the next warehouse in Arisdale Road. Benyon School cannot be seen from West Road, so drivers, especially lorry drivers, are unaware of it. A child hit by a vehicle at 20 miles per hour has a 90% chance of survival, but at 30 miles per hour, the child has a 50% chance of survival. Car drivers and lorry drivers represent um, the bulk of people who exceed these speed limits. The Brandon Groves Estate in South Ockenden has no school, but it does have a 20 mile per hour speed limit in place. Local housing developments, including Brandon Groves, have resulted in more children using the roads and using Benyon School. There was a 20 mile per hour speed limit in West Road during the COVID um, pandemic, while Canterbury Parade Car Park was being used as a vaccination centre. There were no children at school, and at that time, hardly anyone was driving to work. There are statistics from that period, but they are not comparable or relevant. Finally, Tamrisk Road. Since passing places or chicanes were built in Tamrisk Road, there have been numerous incidents of near misses, um, minor car collisions and road rage. Unfortunately, these incidents were not reported and don't appear on police statistics. The Flowers Estate Resident Group Committee urges its members to report incidents, but meanwhile, bad driving habits continue. Thurrock Highways Department says that if traffic calming was introduced in now in 2023, it would be in the form of speed humps. We are petitioning for a 20 mile per hour limit in Tamris Road as well as speed humps to replace the ineffective passing places or chicanes. Not all drivers turning from Tamris Road into the Flowers Estate are respectful to the residents. The paths of the Flowers Estate often end abruptly and force pedestrians to walk in the road or across car parking areas. So there is already considerable risk. Speeding drivers increase the risk to pedestrians and car users. Many of the areas of the Flowers Estate are secluded and make an ideal playground for certain drivers of cars and motorcycles. Trying to navigate a safe path is often precarious, especially for those with mobility issues or with children. Thank you, Mr. Coon. Uh, Council oh. Sorry, Councillor Maney, as portfolio holder, you have one minute to acknowledge and speak on this petition. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And can I firstly thank you, Mr. Coombe, for presenting his petition on behalf of residents and engaging in the democratic process. Um, having listened to what you said, I think you made a very compelling case for us to go and have a look at what, you, what the petition is calling for. I can never at full council give a definitive answer because we have to obviously assess any such request alongside resources and the council's policies in respect of highway schemes. What I can say is we'll look at this very carefully 
Um, I'm supportive in principle of what you're calling for and we'll come back with, you with a substantive reply in due course. But thanks again for engaging on behalf of your residents. Thank you, Mr. Coombe. If you'd like to take your way back to the public gallery, thank you. Item 8, update report in respect of those petitions presented at council and council officers. This report can be found on page 25 of the agenda and is information of the, count of the status of the petitions handed in at the council meetings and at the council officers. <clears throat> Item 9, revised political balance report. Leader, would you please introduce the report that can be found on page 27 to 33. You have five minutes to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't intend to speak for five minutes. The members might be relieved by that. Um, the report speaks for itself. The, the change in, in political balance due to a um, councillor uh, leaving the independence. No one. I can answer that one. Thank you. Councillor Kent, do you wish to speak? Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would any member like to speak on this report? Each member will get about four minutes to speak. Councillor Spade. Sorry, I just, would the leader just clarify what he just said? He just said the member left the independence. Um, sorry, Councillor Spate, when you're speaking, if you speak into the mic, because I didn't catch what you said, so can you stand up again and say, I'm sorry? I may also be guilty of, of lack of hearing, but I'm pretty certain that the leader just said that the member left the independence. Sorry, Madam Mayor, I meant to say left for the independence. Okay, are you happy with that, Councillor Spate? Right. Um, leader, do you wish to sum up? No, thank you. I will now proceed to recommendation. Please use the electronic voting system to vote your record your, record your vote in favour, against or abstain. Right. At the moment, no, I won't, because I'm just going to say who hasn't actually managed to do it. So we've had 46 councillors here. Is that the correct number of councillors tonight? Yes. So we have 45 for, and we have one extension. Thank you. Counsel Councillor Kent, sorry, I didn't see you. M Madam Mayor, could we just uh, clarify this all sing and all dancing system uh, counts votes? Does it also record how each individual member voted and can that be displayed at the same time? Councillor, hang on, please. The, uh, excuse me. The question was asked to me, not to you. Councillor Kent, yes, I actually asked the same question and for the first time, we'll do a re if you do a requisition for it, a vote, we'll do it as we normally do it and then after that, once we've got all used to this by September, then we'll have the names as well. But it probably would have been a bit too much all in one night. 
Do you understand? Thank you. Excuse me, did you put your hand up to speak? No. So can you stop speaking across the chamber? Thank you. I don't actually need a prize in the two and sixes, so no, Gary. All right, thank you. Um, appointments to committees. Yeah. Councillor Spate. Oh, God. <laughs> Councillor Snell. Well, it does end in S, I suppose. I'd just like to say, Madam Mayor, that actually, on, unless it's different on the other side of the chamber, all the names did appear on our screens as the voting was taking place. So we saw... Oh, this one. I missed this one. So they're not working on that side, so that's obviously an issue. But we did see all the names. No, what we... Right. Right. I've, exp I've explained what the system is. I've explained that, councillor, did you want an answer? I've explained what the system is. I've explained what we're gonna do, and that is what we're going to do, okay? Right, sorry, I sound like a school teacher, don't I? <laughs> Appointments to committees and outside bodies, statutory and other panels. Leader, do you wish to make any changes to the appointments previously made? Th uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, due to the um, uh, revised political balance, um, we, uh, the Conservatives will release the two seats um, and uh, Councillor Sammons will um, retain both the, the seats that she's, she's currently on with committees. Um, the investment panel, I'd like to appoint the following. Councillor Snell, Councillor Rigby, Councillor Anderson and Councillor Massey and the Constitutional Working Group remove Councillor Howden and appoint Councillor Snell. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Kent. Thank you. Does any independent member wish to make any changes to their appointments? Thank you. Is any member in disagreement with the nominations made? No. Questions from members. We have up to 45 minutes for this item. There were three questions to the leader and seven questions to cabinet members and committee chairs. These can be found on page 35 to 36 of the agenda. Those questions not dealt with at this meeting, the member to whom the question is addressed shall provide a written answer as soon as possible after the meeting. I would ask those members who have submitted questions to please read out their question when asked to do so. Question one from Councillor Byrne to the leader. Madam Mayor, leader, first of all, can I hand photos around of Stamford Station so people actually know what I'm talking about? Is Sorry, Cou uh, Councillor Byrne, you're not using your mic. Hello. Can I pass a photo around to both sides so I know what I'm talking about and make it more, more self-explanatory, really? It shows they are that, something, but it shows okay. that we haven't got a station, basically. Go on, yeah, then. Go on, then. Thank you. Holiday. Right. Looks lovely. Right, Councillor Byrne. Yes, five and a half years since your party promised us a state of the art train station for Stamfordly Oak. Is it not about time you delivered on that promise? Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Byrne, for your question. The delay in delivering a new station and transport interchange at Stamfordly Oak is one example of the Council's past failures to manage capital projects effectively. As I have said previously at the Council, we accept the findings of the BVI report and acknowledge that we must learn lessons of our past failings. A detailed review of Stamfordly Oak project will be coming to the Cabinet in September and we will be discussing, sorry, and will be discussed at Planning, Transport, Regen and Overview Scrutiny Committee. 
Thank you, Leader. Councillor Byrne, would you like to propose a second Please. supplementary? <coughs> it appears you're now scrambling around for a quick fix with Henderson and Taylor well in the fray. Rushing it through without adequate discussion to avoid another Conservative embarrassment and praying that CLEP do not ask for a £7.5 million pound back because of improper use of funding. So the question to you, sir, I know it's not your fault, it's the ex-ex leader, but did the ex-ex leader agree to spend the South Essex local enterprise fund of £7.5 million on demolishing the station and not for its intended use for the bus turnaround? Is that correct Thank or not? Thank you, Councillor Byrne. Leader. Um, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Byrne, for your question. I, I'm afraid I can't, I can't answer that question. I can, I can promise to look into it and come back to you with a proper answer. But what I would say to you is, that, as I said in my, my original part of my answer, the BVI made it clear there were failings in all um, of our, our projects. We need to learn from them, move on, and, and ensure that next time we try and deliver these kind of projects, we do it, we do it in a better and a, a more um, satisfactory way. Thank you, Leader. Question two, Councillor Byrne. It's basically stealing seven and a half uh, million. That's a bit, a bit naughty, isn't it? Anyway. Councillor Byrne, yep. hang on. Because you when, you're, when you're mumbling and okay, trying yeah. to add bits, no, right. it doesn't, that's you know, you get used to it. I can't you hear it. Him. No good. So anyway. hang on a minute. Will you right, question two, Councillor Byrne. You can change it. Will you please consult us on all things Stamford Station in the future? Do not rush. Please do not rush through a, a cheap corner-cutting job. Stamford deserves better. If you had consulted us on the previous time, I could have, or we could have saved you £4 million. And if you ask us again, we can still save you millions of pounds. We are there. We know. But you didn't ask us last time, and you've spent £15 million on wasted money, and not one of you asked us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor oh. Byrne. Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm, so, I'm slightly puzzled, Councillor Byrne, because I, I believe, if I'm right, you were actually on planning when this came to um, planning, and you voted against the station. So if you'd have voted in favour, we would actually have started to build the station. Sit down, Councillor Byrne, I'm speaking. Councillor Byrne, ca uh, Councillor Byrne, sit down, please. Councillor Byrne, no, Councillor no. Byrne, sit down. Councillor Byrne, sit down. I'm waiting for the leader to finish his answer. Councillor Byrne, please. Councillor Byrne, you the other you £15 and you wouldn't answer it, and you're still not answering it. Councillor Byrne, I'm going horse as it is, so please, hang on. This Let him answer, a councillor. Backwards, we've got to go forward. She said it, and they all, they all agreed. Councillor Byrne, leader, would you like to yes, repeat sir. your answer to Councillor Byrne, and then we can go back to Councillor Byrne. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As I was saying, if the original planning application had gone through, which you voted against, we probably would be in a diff completely different position now, and we may well have a, a, a station either being built or in, or in place. So, so my, my, commi my commitment... Councillor Byrne, be quiet. Sorry. We can't keep... Councillor Byrne. No, I'm not going to chuck him out. I just want you to be quiet. Uh, Councillor Byrne, right, do you want to pose a supplementary? Right, okay, thank you. Councillor Arnold, Deborah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't know if I can make a point of order or not on code of conduct, but the conduct of some councillors in this chamber is pretty disgusting. Interrupting, over-talking the Mayor and other councillors is just not in our code of conduct. Thank you, Councillor Arnold, and that is noted, and I hope Councillor Byrne has noted that as well. And I do stop the other side talking if they do it. I'm very even-handed, but I'm not going to just let you keep on. Question three, Councillor Kent to the leader. Councillor Kent, please, can you read your... Councillor Byrne, be quiet. Councillor Kent, 
Can you please read out your question? Uh, Madam ma 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 Mayor, can oh. I, 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 I hate to, 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 to do it, but Councillor Byrne actually has another question and further supplementaries to come. Well, you see, you made me lose, your, lose my place, right, Councillor Brian Byrne. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've got a supplementary, or you've got another question. question. Right, go on then. No, you can have your question first. Oh, I've lost now. Uh. Last year, the excuse there was not enough time to organise a resident referendum if we go above 5% tax increase. Now we've got plenty of time to organise it. So should we go above 5%? Will you take it to the residents or we do what you did last time and just vote it through? Leader. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Byrne, for your question. In 2022-23, the Council agreed a total increase in council tax of 9.99%. In normal circumstances, any increase above the level of 4.99 would have to be considered excessive and require a local referendum based on the council tax principles set out by central government. However, the council tax principles in 22-23 were updated specifically for both Slough and Thurrock Council. This meant that these councils could raise council tax by up to 10% without being required to hold a referendum. The current indicative position for 23-24 is that any increases in excess of 4.99 will trigger a referendum. However, given the current scale of the financial challenge faced by the Council, this remains under review by central government. Consequently, further decisions on the level of Council tax and the need for a referendum will be considered as part of the budget setting process for 24-25. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Byrne. Um, what a question that no, lots of residents are asking. Are the, are the Conservatives in control of Thurrock, or are you just one of Dr Dave's puppets? Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Byrne. Um, Councillor Byrne, um, you're well aware of what the um, intervention by central government yeah. is. Yes, you, I am. You've, you're, you're well aware of it, well part of it. Isn't it time you actually started being a little bit more honest with your residents? I it's am, all yeah. of us. All 49 councillors are in the same position. Not this side, that side, or whatever you are. Okay. Um, it is all 49 of us. Right, so start being honest with your residents. I yes, am. commissioners... Uh, Commissioners have been put in place by the government to control our finances. You know that, I know that. It's about time you started explaining that oh, to your residents. Councillor Byrne, stop over talking. Okay, I'll just ask puppet, yeah. That's it, isn't it? Had it do you, last one, do you did you subscribe to labelling residents as one of your fellow cabinet members did recently? I believe he labelled some residents as plebeians or commoners, so do you, do you go along with... Um, Labelling residents? Um, I don't know if that's a supplementary that was to do with what you're not. So I don't think I can allow that, Councillor Byrne. Leader, I don't want you to answer that. You may think you've got one over on me, but I don't think you have. So, Councillor Byrne, just behave yourself. Councillor Kent... Thank you. Will the Leader of the Council give an update on progress with the Boundary Commission in securing an early, rev early review of boundaries for Thurrock? Thank you, Councillor Kent. Leader, could you respond? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kent, for your question. I I'm, I'm sort of struggling to understand what your question is actually about. I think it could be referring to the fact that when I made a statement about um, elections, I suggested and I think other people have agreed with me, that if we are having all outs, which the minister still hasn't actually come back and confirmed what is happening, it would be an ideal opportunity to have a boundary review because the Boundary Commission, I think, several years ago, 
suggested that we needed a boundary review, so why not wrap them all up in one go? Otherwise, what we'll have is an all-out elections and then potentially, a couple of years later, another all-out elections. That's costing taxpayers a lot of money and I don't think they deserve that kind of expense. Councillor Kent, do you want to respond? Thank you. Yeah, I understand why the leader would like to pretend that he doesn't understand the question. It was actually the amendment that they put to a motion last month. However, we now have clarity from the Boundary Commission uh, that a boundary review of Thurrock is scheduled for the end of 2025 and will take roughly 18 months, so we'll conclude in 2027. That would lead to all-out elections on new boundaries in 2028. Is the leader of the council really suggesting uh, that we should wait for those all-out elections until 2028, or would he now agree that we should move to all-out elections as soon as possible, in, in effect, from next year? Um, excuse me, councillors. Can you let the leader reply, please, before you all clap or do whatever? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor Kent, for your um, supplementary question. There's, there's, I've never been um, ambivalent about this. I believe that there should be all-out elections at the earliest opportunity. To tr again, a bit like what another councillor is trying to do. Let's be honest with the um, residents of the borough. It, it would be impossible to arrange all-out elections for next year. Totally impossible and impractical to arrange. So that's, that's not going to happen. All I've suggested is that if we're going to have all-out elections, which I favour, the Boundary Commission could start its work now and have it done and in place for 2025 if that's when they decide to have all-out elections. Councillor Kent, would you like to reply? Thank so, you. Ma Madam Mayor, I'll just, just reiterate, the Boundary Commission has said that it has timetabled the back end of 2025 for Thurrock and that will take 18 months. Uh, the, the Leader of the Council says it is just not possible to hold all-out elections next year, given that we have at least police, crime and fire commissioner elections next year. Can you give us the reasons that make all-out elections impossible for next year? Thank you, Councillor Kent. The Leader. Excuse me, the Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the reasons are the legislation needs to be in place to be able to have all-out elections. Um, and I, I also think that there should be a boundary review at the same time so that we can have all-out elections. In, and if you, if you look at your timetable, um, 18 months, if they started now, they would be in place for 2025. Thank you. Uh, can you stop talking across the chamber, please, gentlemen? Right. Next question, Councillor Polly to Councillor Maney. Councillor Polly, would you read out your question, please? Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Uh, would the portfolio holder please give me an update on the current plans for the former Culver Centre in the Ward of Bellis? Thank you. Councillor Maney, would you like to reply? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Polly, for your question. Uh, Madam Mayor, on the 7th of July 2021, Cabinet declared the property surplus and approved this should be released for housing development. A planning application to develop the site was considered at Planning Committee on the 23rd of September 2021 and was approved subject to conditions in the Section 106 agreement. The Council has, however, attained retained ownership of the site and now considers that it should be brought to the market for sale, from which we will obviously receive uh, a capital receipt. Uh, at the current time, Madam Mayor, it's deemed that the private sector is the best place to bring forward the development of new homes on the site. Due diligence in advance of marketing has been completed and agents have been appointed to assist with the disposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Maney. Councillor Polly. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Uh, there was extensive consultation with our residents on, on this particular site um, going back to 2020. Uh, I would ask that all three ward members, Councillor Hurrell, Councillor George Coxall and myself, are, that we are kept informed at each stage of the uh, disposal of the asset and consulted on the future plans for the site. Thank you, Councillor Polly. Councillor Maney. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do know there's a lot of interest in this particular site from both councillors and residents. And I think it's a fair ask that they be kept included um, as the process uh, continues. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be consulted and informed. Uh, in actual fact, I think you know, the council has has expressed its intention to release assets um, and, and you know, bring in capital receipts. And I think as that happens, all ward members should be consulted on those assets in their ward because there's, in respect of many of them, likely to be public interest and it's only right that they're kept informed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Manny. Councillor Polly, would you like another supplementary question? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Polly. Question two, Councillor Green to the leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. What is the portfolio holder doing to tackle the increase of fly tipping in the borough? Thank you, Councillor Green. Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and thank you, Councillor Green. I'd like to welcome you to the chamber and to, uh, for asking your first question. The council actively targets those that fly tip within our borough. Since the 1st of April 2023, there have been 801 reports of fly tipping made to the council with 227 suitable for investigation. All referrals to the environmental enforcement team are investigated, which has resulted in the team seizing four vehicles for being used in the offence of fly tipping, as well as issuing 41 fixed penalty notices to those that have been identified as being involved in fly tipping activities. We continue to ask that all instances of fly tipping are reported to the council immediately so that the teams have the best opportunity to identify those responsible. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Green, would you like to pose a second? Yes, please. With the recent changes in the rules at Limford Recycling Centre, does he agree this has made the recent increases in fly tipping worse? Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor um, Green, for your supplementary question. Um, no, no, I don't, actually. Due to the increasing numbers of suspected traders using the HWRC, the following changes were implemented from the 1st of June 2023. A new six-visit permit system allowing smaller type vans and trailers access to the site and higher vehicles restricted to two visits per year at one address. By preventing larger vehicles access to the site, which can sometimes take up to two hours to unload, the flow of traffic on Buckingham Hill Road won't have such a build-up of traffic, which could result in accidents and queuing. Also, this means that council taxpayers aren't subsidising um, commercial um, ventures uh, to dispose of their waste. The estimated annual disposal savings is currently at 30k. However, £12,200 reduction in disposal costs in the first month of this introduction. And for me, if you multiply that by 12, it comes to around 140k, which is exactly the kind of money we need to ensure that we have lollipop ladies and lollipop men cr uh, uh, crossing the roads, helping our children cross the roads. Thank you, Leader. Councillor. Thank you. While the portfolio holder believes this is not the reason for the recent increase, would he commit to reviewing the rules to see if that is the case and help the residents um, get rid of bulky waste? Thank you. Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, myself, I, I always look at myself as a resident, what do I do? I probably go to the tip two, three times a year, about that. If somebody is actually going to the tip for six or more visits and, you know, can't do it within the permits, then, you know, I question, are they actually, you know, running a business? Because I think most people don't need those kind of visits. So, always open to review a system, always interested to see if it's actually working. Personally, I think this is the right thing to do shouldn't have council taxpayers subsidising people running businesses and that's exactly what this is doing. Thank you. Councillor Kent to Councillor Kelly. Thank you. At the planning committee held on the 13th of July, the item land adjacent Watts Wood was deferred because, in the words of the committee chair, there was conflicting advice from the monitoring officer in terms of the membership numbers. Will the chair of the planning committee set out that advice from the monitoring officer? 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Councillor Ken. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ken, and thank you for allowing me to clarify the situation. Prior to the start of the planning meeting on the 13th of July, questions were raised to myself and the Vice Chair as to the rules surrounding substitutes and if subs could be used for all or part of the meeting. Uh, this is because one of the items has gone over an election cycle. Uh, prior to that, I was provided with legal advice from the uh, from lawyers, mon the monitoring officer and democratic services on predetermination, predisposition, bias, and coming to the committee with an open mind when making the decision. Advice was also shared on substitute members, which is set out in accordance with our constitution under section 28.3 chapter 2 part 2 that's the jargon that we, oh, sorry the advice uh, on this base and questions were raised and uh, around the substitute ruling and uh, I made a decision to defer the item just to clarify uh, the rulings it was a quite unique situation we found ourselves in uh, thank you thank you councillor Kelly councillor Kent do you want to ask another question M Madam Mayor, is the Chair of the Planning Committee really telling us that after seven years as Chair of the Committee, he doesn't know the rules on membership? Uh, six years. Um, the, the, the reality of the situation is what happened was Councillor Maney, respectfully, was a resident speaker against uh, the item in April, and she's obviously had a very successful uh, set of elections since then. Um, and obviously she's now on the Planning Committee. Uh, she had a conflict of interest. Obviously there was an opportunity there to arrange a substitute, Councillor Tandy, in her place. Um, I, was, I did make the Whips Office aware of this. Uh, democratic Services were aware. Um, but uh, respectfully, before the meeting started, as this was all clarified, Councillor Maney said that she didn't want to enact that substitute. Um, as she had a conflict of interest, um, I decided just to defer the item to make sure that that wouldn't be brought up in a judicial review. However, Councillor Kent, I will be honest with you, your question was, did I understand the ruling? And um, <clears throat> I deferred the item to check that. I, I, di I didn't know, and that's why I deferred the item. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Councillor Kent, do you want to propose the My, last my question wasn't whether Councillor Kelly understood the rules at all. My question was that he... Was that he said that there was conflicting advice from the monitoring officer. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to hear what that advice was. H how, however, it must be clear to everybody that it's not allowed to try to substitute somebody for one item on an agenda. You substitute for the whole meeting or you don't substitute for the whole meeting. Given that that meeting, uh, th there's been lots of fallout from it, there's been a cross-party complaint made to the monitoring officer, there's been lots of activity on social media, and there is a perception that the rules were, uh, there was an attempt to subvert the rules at that, at that committee. What is the chair of the planning committee going to do uh, to change that perception and to clean up the act of the planning committee? Thank you, Councillor Kent. Councillor Kelly. Okay, thank you, Councillor Kent. So just to clarify, um, and obviously you, you was on a planning committee yourself, you can use subs for part of the meeting. Um, if you didn't know and if you was uh, aware, Councillor Maney actually um, put Councillor Redcell in her place for one of the items, and that is well within the rules, that is in the Constitution. Um, well, you're shaking your head, but it, I can provide evidence. In relation to uh, the hot air around this application, um, what, what I would say is, first of all, I do apologise to Councillor Ben Maney and Councillor Jackie Maney. Um, yeah, I, I made a bad judgment call on that, on, on that, but I do think by deferring the item and getting clarification around the rules was the right decision. We have heard over the last few months about making the wrong decisions on finances. All I'd done was simply defer the item to get further clarification, but to confirm no constitutional rules have been broken. And obviously I would have seen yesterday uh, a letter that was sent in um, across party um, I welcome it. I think that any sort of um, scrutiny should be uh, brought forward. And uh, I, I respectfully, you know, I respect everyone on this letter. And uh, hopefully I'll, I'll sit down with the monitor and officer and we can work out where things have gone wrong. But uh, apologies if I haven't met the standards that are expected of me. But absolutely, the Constitution was not broken. Absolutely, you can use subs for part of the meeting. And um, we are where we are. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Right. Question, question. Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor sorry, could I raise the point of order as, my, as I was named in that answer? Sorry, I didn't see your... As, as my name was uh, mentioned in Councillor Kelly's answer, um, could I please make a statement, a point of clarification? Actually, Councillor Maney, I don't think that is in the Constitution. I'm not sure, so can I just check? Thank you. Madam Mayor. Uh, hang on a minute. I would like to make a point of order. It's a, a point of personal explanation, not a point of order. So, yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's actually, um, 
my understanding of the Constitution differs greatly from Councillor Kelly's, and it concerns me that even at this point, there are two conflicting um, points of view on this. My understanding of the Constitution is very clear in that it says uh, a substitute has to be there for the entirety of the meeting. Um, and I believe that was corroborated in a briefing which was sent by um, uh, Matthew Balter and seen by the monitoring officer. It's not a matter for debate here. I think Councillor Kelly's interpretation is wrong. Um, I, I do think we need to have this ironed out once and for all because we simply, I might be wrong, but that's not what I understand the briefing from uh, the monitoring officer to say and it's not my interpretation of the constitution which is very clear. It's hard to misinterpret that. Um, and it's concerning that members of any committee, particularly a regulatory committee, might not understand that. I think it's appropriate for them to appoint a substitute on behalf of a member who hasn't asked for a substitute to be appointed and also to think that other members can dip in and out of uh, the planning committee for convenience. So uh, the point I'm trying to make, Madam Mayor, is perhaps we could once and for all have the monitoring officer clarify this so that these clearly prevailing conflicting views do not continue and bring the planning committee into disrepute. Thank you. Um, what I've asked, or what I'm going to ask the monitoring officer to do, if you're in agreement with this monitoring officer, I would like you to send an email tomorrow morning to every councillor and clarify the situation. Madam Mayor, I have it here. Um, hang on a minute, Councillor Maney, no. Just, just let me listen. Right. What happened apparently was the monitoring officer sent it to all the planning members, but it didn't go to all the councillors. So it will go now, please, monitoring officer, to all the councillors. Is that acceptable? Yes, yes. Councillor Redsill. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wasn't going to speak, but as my name was mentioned um, by Councillor Kelly, I was brought in for one item and I sat my bum down on the seat and then I had to go. Uh, so I Councillor Redsill, you're not really clarifying the point. So I think we'll leave it there. I've made a ruling. We're going to have the monitoring officer say tomorrow. Thank you. What's the point? <clears throat> Right, go on then. Sorry, just uh, what I was going to say is as portfolio holder for governance, there's clearly still a misunderstanding even after having received a copy of the constitution. So perhaps the monitor and officer and I can have a discussion and then do an email to all members, as you say, but maybe change the wording so that there is no conflict or misunderstanding. Councillor Arnold, I think, yes, I understand the point you are part of the, excuse me, is point of, um, of the governance, and yes, but as long as the email goes out tomorrow to all members, because I'm conscious that they may all be going off on holiday, and I'm sure they're desperate to read what, what the answer is. I don't think so, Councillor Maney. I think we'll just drop it there. I've, I've decided what's going to happen. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Worrell. I think that you've let other people speak, Madam Mayor, and the person that was affected on the night, you've blocked her from speaking, and that is unfair. When she was the first one in here to put her hand up tonight, and other people have spoke, it went Councillor Ben Maney, Councillor Jackie Maney, and other people have spoke before, before, and she had her hand up first. So with all due respect, I think you should let Councillor Jackie Maney speak. Hang on a minute. Firstly, Councillor Maney, next time, hold your hand up high, and it has to be a personal... Hang on, no. Not going... Yeah, you know, Councillor Byrne actually gave a good demonstration. Uh, Councillor 
Maney, Councillor Jackie Maney, if it's a point of personal expectation or a clarification, then yes, you may speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Worrell. Appreciate that. Um, my husband actually, uh, Councillor Maney, sorry, actually made the point I wanted to make, but as Councillor Byrne passed round photos for us to see Stanford Station, I have an email that I'm quite happy to pass around to make it easy for people so they don't have to lose sleep wondering what it says. They can see it now, if that would be all right, Madam Mayor. Well, yes, but I still want the monitoring officer to send one officially with Councillor Arnold. Thank you. Is it a point of order, Councillor Spate, or a personal point? Point of order, Madam Mayor. Your generosity at our last council meeting in terms of time management was well noted, and you did extremely well. Um, I have two questions uh, to ask, one of which should have been asked to the leader, but I, I passed that one over. Could I just ask that we reset the clock, because we've just wasted 10 minutes on point of orders? Thank you. We probably can, yes, but I don't know if, but we're not quite there yet. Exactly, thank you. And I'm not sure if we've got the ability to turn the clock back at the minute, but hopefully we have. <laughs> Question five, Councillor Kent to Councillor Carter. God, I'm losing the will to live here. Right. <laughs> Councillor Polly to Councillor Cockshaw. Thank you. Thank you again, Madam Mayor. Uh, I would like to ask po portfolio holder uh, for communities if we have a local event organisers network. Thank you, Councillor Polly. Councillor Cockshaw, George. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Polly, for your question. Um, I, just, I have asked officers to inquire about this on my behalf of, of the existence of this network, and I've been told so far that, they have, that it may not quite exist here in Thurrock. Um, I have, of course, looked into other councils around the, around the country and how this works, and if this is something we could look at and explore, I'm happy to take away and see what works we can do with community groups and with officers to try and create such network in the borough. Thank you, Councillor Cockshaw. Councillor Polly. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, and I would welcome that, Councillor Cockshaw. As, as we know, uh, the effects of COVID have affected our voluntary sector and our third sector very, very harshly. And a lot of the fundraising efforts that they would normally rely on have, have dissipated. Um, so uh, I would welcome the, the, for us to investigate uh, um, something where we can have a, an event organisers network where people can learn off of each other. Our council offices are not always easily to access and if you're trying to put on a fun run or put on a charitable event, I, I think if we could work with our partners in, in the third sector, such as CVS and that, to, to support people that, um, that want to put on various... Uh, events in Thurrock, I think that that was something that the council could lead on. Thank you. Councillor Cockshaw. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Polly, once again for your supplementary question. I think this is really important to emphasise the role of the third sector plays here in the borough. When we look at what we're trying to do, especially with our health and wellbeing strategy, the role of working with our partners, working with the third sector is really important to actually achieving those goals, tackling health inequalities and actually looking at how we can do to share services moving forward. Especially when it comes to looking at an event network and looking how we can help the third sector and give them the power and actually get involved and actually get them off the ground if it needs support or not. I've, I've, I'm quite fortunate in 
both here in Thurrock and also in my day job, I'm engaging with the third sector quite a lot. And it's impressive. I'm always taken back at every time I go to visit charities and these organisations, actually what they're doing and what they can achieve. I think it's really important we have we work with that partnership and that partnership is really critical here. And if we can look, and I'm certainly take away and look at how we can utilise some sort of network like this with um, officers and see how we can work, engage that properly, I'll be really impressed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cockshaw. Councillor Polly, anything else you'd like to add? Thank you. Question five, Councillor Kent to Councillor Carter. Will the portfolio holder set out his strategy for school improvement? Thank you, uh, Councillor Kent, for your question. Um, after the previous Labour government began the process of academisation, 54 out of 55 of our schools are now academies. Since this process has happened, it has been the Department of Education that holds the academies to account. Due to most of the schools being as academies, the local authority no longer receives the School Improvement Monitoring Brokering Grant from the Department for Education. This administration continues to be the professional critical friend of our schools. This includes regular meetings between the local authority and our schools. And I personally find that every one of our academies have so far been very eager to talk and to a very open in conversation. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Councillor Kent. Ma Madam Mayor, for, for Thurrock Secondary Schools, 72.8% of young people are attending schools that are good or outstanding as judged by Ofsted. That's against an England average of 83% and an East of England average of 82.3%. That puts Thurrock as 133rd out of 163 education authorities in the country. Uh, there is some fantastic work that goes on in our schools, day in and day out, but I don't think uh, that that is a good enough performance. Does the portfolio holder think that's good enough? Councillor Carter. I think we have done exceptional work in our primary schools where 97% are good and average. And I have the numbers here for secondary school. And you are quite right to point out that one is requires improvement and one is inadequate. We'll continue to work and support our schools through this time. We should also mention um, Thurrock's extraordinary special uh, educational needs schools where two uh, free graded are rated outstanding and the other is good. Councillor Kent. But Madam Mayor, what is the portfolio holder actually going to do to help to improve the standard of education offered in secondary schools in Thurrock? Councillor Carter. As I have pointed out, uh, Councillor Kent, I will continue to be the professional critical friend of our schools as a lot of these improvements um, largely rest with um, the Board of Governors. You, you yourself would know, being a governor at an educational facility that requires improvement. So we will <laughs> continue to be the professional uh, friend and we will work well with our academies. Um, what I'm going to propose... Are you all listening? There's only two more questions, so rather than um, stop them and then have answers, because this is the last meeting, I'm proposing, if you're all in agreement, that I take the next... Thank you. Right. Councillors, as long as we keep them short, sweet, and to the point, Councillor Spate to Councillor Maney. Ben Maney. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you for your kindness in extending, if we get that way. I mean, I'm usually succinct and to the point. Um, hopefully the portfolio holder is aware of the continuing problems of the lack of convenient parking in Stanfordly Hope and the problems that shortage, sorry, the problems that shortage exacerbates to the bad behaviour of drivers. If so, what are his plans to alleviate the situation? Councillor Maney. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Spate, for your question. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm aware that parking pressures have existed in and around King Street and the High Street since the ending of free parking at the Sandpits car park. 
I have pre previously also been alerted by Councillor Piccolo of antisocial behaviour, antisocial parking in the form of car sales in restricted parking areas, which I requested enforcement officers to attend to. No other specific concerns have been brought to my attention of late in respect of Stanfordly Hope, but I understand that senior officers from the Council's transport development and highways teams met with Council Spate in Stanfordly Hope recently to discuss the issue of illegal and antisocial parking. I'm informed, informed that suggestions arising from the meeting included the introduction of further double yellow lines and a review of placement review of, of bollards. Officers have since agreed to commence the process to consider the Yellow Lines proposal and have advised that a public consultation will be required to implement this. As you will know, Madam Mayor, parking problems and other such highways issues are unfortunately an issue in many of our wards, especially those which include town centres and busy high streets. Whilst it would not be appropriate for me as portfolio holder to personally co commit the council to specific action in each case, I'm always willing to discuss such issues with ward councillors, including Councillor Spate, and direct officers to consider potential solutions in line with council resources and due process. Thank you, Councillor Maney. Councillor Spate. Uh, thank you, Councillor Maney. Um, thank you for that answer, which is, which is very informative. Um, I, I'm, I'm grateful that the senior officers that I met with have passed on those suggestions. Um, it is really good. And, and I would like to take this point just to commend the officers concerned for a listening to what I had to say and what residents had to say and taking the time to come out and have a site visit. That's really positive, constructive action. Um, the, the double yellow lines, if we go down the road of a consultation, so be it. The one thing that concerns me um, is that there is an obvious solution, which is the installation of two bollards in two particular places. And the senior officers that I spoke to, the reason why they sort of were against doing that was that they said, yes, they would work, but the problem is drivers will probably knock them down and we haven't got the money to then replace them. I don't think a shortage of money should stop road safety and the convenience of pedestrians. I hope you would agree with me on that. Councillor Maney. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think whenever uh, a road safety issue is, is identified, then expense shouldn't come into it. I mean, we, we, we have a, a relatively small budget in terms of the integrated transport block, which funds these kind of works. Um, that is allocated on a yearly basis. And as we're halfway through the year, that funding is committed to other projects. So it, it is possible to redirect, redirect resources, but it will always be at the, at the expense of something else, which I think we have to factor in. But uh, as I just said, I, I'm always happy to look at proposals um, and to challenge officers on those. And if Councillor Spate would like me to do so, or, or even visit him in Stanford, he hope and he can show me the problem, I'm happy to do so. Councillor Spate, do you have a question? Yes, yes, just a very brief one. Thank you for, again, a constructive answer. I, I thank you for it. Um, the, the one question would I ask, would I hope you would agree with me then that parking enforcement in the interim uh, could be a trifle more vigilant in Stamford. I have seen them walk past vehicles that are parked on the pavement. Um, I don't know why they would make that decision, but they do. But, but I hope you would join me, uh, Councillor May, in asking that the enforcement team uh, just slightly increase their vigilance in Stamford. Thank you, Councillor Spate. Councillor Maney. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would be concerned if our enforcement officers um, ever willingly, you know, overlooked any parking infringement without good reason, um, and I share Councillor Spate's concerns in respect of that. Uh, the team is relatively small and they're under great demand, so they can't be everywhere all of the time, but uh, if there is certainly a case for additional enforcement in Stamperley Hope, I would be more than happy to recommend that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Maney. Councillor Spate, a question to the Leader. Thank you. I'll be as quick as I can. Um, is the Leader and Portfolio happy with the current state of the borough's council-administered cemeteries and sure that the service is equitably resourced? Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Spate, for your question. If you'd have asked me this question a couple of weeks ago, I would have said no, definitely not. Our cemeteries were in a poor condition. It was brought to my attention um, the church um, opposite and I went over and had a look and I was quite frankly appalled um, at the condition of the um, cemetery so I immediately asked officers to rectify this to go out cut the cemeteries and they did indeed do that there is a, um, a um, monthly inspection um, and I have asked them to make sure that they are doing that monthly inspection to make sure that they don't 
um, fall into the kind of condition they were previously. Do you wish to ask another question? Thank you. Um, yes, uh, th that's good news. Um, this matter was brought to my attention, and I think most members in this chamber will have had at some point in time a question about cemeteries. Um, I think if we were all honest, they're not as good as we would really like them to be, but we live in, in difficult times. Um, uh, for example, at Chadwell, I, I, would, I was down there a few weeks ago, and a, and a couple, it was on Father's Day, and, and a couple of young people had travelled from Australia to visit their grandfather's grave. And it was in the middle of the plot, and they had to wade through weeds and rubbish that was knee high. Uh, sorry, not rubbish, uh, weeds and long grass and whatever. <laughs> Uh, and it was very disapp disappointing, and, and they were in, uh, in tears at the moment. Councillor Space. Yes, I'm going to ask the question, question, Madam Mayor. Yes. I understand that uh, from speaking to, again, the excellent officers who have been very cooperative, and I must praise them for that, um, that there is provision next spring for additional, or likely provision for next spring, for additional resource to be put in when we have the growing season. I hope that is going to happen, and, and I hope you would agree with me. It would be a really good use of our resources. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Spate. Um, certainly at the moment, when we have special days like um, Father's Day, like Mother's Day, you know, the teams um, you know, are clear to make that extra effort to make sure that the cemeteries do look, do look um, you know, welcoming for people and, and the way you'd expect them to be. Um, I, I am... Um, confident that they've got the resources that they need but I'm always happy and I, I always do look at it and I'll take the suggestion that you made back and speak to officers about it. Thank you leader. Right item 12 reports from members representing the council on outside bodies. Does any member who represents council on an outside body wish to present a report. Councillor Spate. It would be me, wouldn't it? Um, very briefly, I'd just like to report back from the East Thurrock Community Association meeting that I attended um, last week. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Mark Bradbury, who in advance of that meeting, which he couldn't attend, mm -hmm. sent a very conciliatory letter um, indicating that there was movement on that. Um, I look forward to uh, joining Mark on a visit to the club. The members there are very appreciative of the action and we're making, I think, steady progress. So thank you, Mr. Bradbury. Thank you, Councillor Spate. Um, item 13, minutes of committees. These are listed in the agenda on the contents page. Item 14, motions update report. This report can be found on page 37 of the agenda and is information on the status of the motions. Item 15, motion one. Councillor Kent, do you wish to propose and then speak to your motion as printed on page 41 of the agenda? You have five minutes to speak. Madam Mayor, last month we received and we welcomed the best value inspection report and I want to reiterate my thanks to the inspection team for the work they have done, the evidence they've presented on the failures of Thurrock Council to deliver on its best value obligations for its recommendations, which we've already accepted uh, pretty much in full. However, the best value inspection was just that. It was an inspection. An, inspe an inspection that looked in a systematic way, gathering and analysing evidence and information to reach conclusions on the Council's ability to deliver on its best value duties. What I'm calling for tonight is a full inquiry <coughs> that explores in detail the issues that have led to the financial collapse of Thurrock and of local authorities too. And that inquiry needs to look at a range of factors. The first is the impact of the reduction in central government grants to councils. These grants have been cut by 40% in real terms between 2009-10 and 2019-20, from 46.5 billion to 28 billion. And while it's difficult to give a like-for-like -like comparison of government funding, because there are so many variables, not least changing responsibilities, changes to, to the way things are ring-fenced, uh, we estimate that funding for Thurrock dropped by about £64 million pounds between 2009 and 2016. And you have to ask the question, does anybody seriously believe that the administration would have embarked on such a risky borrowing and investment strategy 
had the council been properly funded. It's clear to me that councils aren't being adequately funded and we need root and branch reform of local government funding. M Madam Mayor, you also can't imagine that 10 or 15 years ago, with the Audit Commission in place and the Comprehensive Performance Assessment Regime and regular inspections, that the financial collapse of this and other councils would have been allowed to happen. And when the government scrapped the Audit Commission back in 2014, they boasted it would save around £120 million pounds a year across the country. Madam Mayor, that is barely a quarter of Thurrock Council's deficit on last year's budget. And to offset cuts to funding, government has encouraged councils to embrace what became known as the commercialisation agenda. And it's again clear to me that Thurrock and other councils would not have embarked on such reckless commercial activities that have led to such a catastrophic outcome without a mixture of funding cuts and direct encouragement from government. One of the questions that councillors and residents have repeatedly asked is just why the council's external auditors didn't pick up on the risks that were being taken, didn't pick up in the gaps in insurance, didn't pick up on the lack of proper governance around decision making. That uh, an issue is clearly not limited to Thurrock, so we need a proper look into this across authorities. And indeed, the Best Value Inspection uh, Report recommends that the Secretary of State commission a review of external audit for local authorities to consider the role that external audit currently plays in the assurance framework to make recommendations on how to strengthen the quality of the service and reporting requirements, particularly in support of an, er an early warning mechanism. The best value inspection also calls for the roles of the three statutory officers to be strengthened and for a requirement for them to work together. Again, I support this and think it would be invaluable to know just how much of a difference this would have made across those councils that have served Section 114 notices. And finally, central government needs to look at the role that it has played in this catastrophe. How can it be that Thurrock Council was able to borrow close on a billion pounds from a hundred or more other local authorities without anybody in central government noticing or picking up on it. How can it be that Thurrock Council was allowed to come within a week of not being able to pay its bills, pay its staff or repay its loans? Imagine the impact that that might have had across local government. Central government must have stronger oversight of local councils. Madam Mayor, I've deliberately tried to keep my remarks brief, uh, but I do want to finish by saying this. Members have regularly asked how do we make sure that this never happens again? And that is a question that I'm sure that has been asked in Slough and Croydon and Northamptonshire and Woking. And the truth is, it could happen again. But a full government-led inquiry into the circumstances that, that have led to the financial collapse of Thurrock and others would, I am sure, go a long way to identifying the causes and reducing the risk of a similar thing occurring somewhere else. Or, God forbid, a similar thing happening again here in Thurrock. Thank you, Thank you, Councillor Kent. Is that seconded? Councillor Kieran, would you like to reserve, would you like to speak now, or would you like to reserve your right to speak? To I reserve my right, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. I've received an amendment to this motion from the leader, and this has been tabled. Is this amendment seconded? Sorry, Councillor Arnold, um, do you want to speak now or wait? I'll wait, Councillor uh, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Leader, you have four minutes to speak on your amendment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll keep my remarks short. I, I, I mean, I, I passionately believe that, you know, full council should be about members being able to bring things to the council, scrutinise, ask questions. Um, and the reason I put this amendment in was because this is already happening. The government already is um, investigating what actually happened in the councils that um, Councillor Kent mentioned. So I, d I do feel asking, uh, proposing this motion, really, we could be discussing and scrutinising other things. The government is preparing to investigate. The BVI gives us answers. We've uh, accepted all of that. The government have accepted the recommendations that are in there and, and are continuing to look at the ways local government is funded and the way that it is run. So um, I think it's slightly um, premature. It's not needed. These, the, all of the things that Councillor Kent is asking for are already being looked into by, by government. 
Thank you, Leader. Now, does any other member wish to comment on the amended or the substantive motion? Each member will get four minutes to speak. Councillor Spate. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Um, I have a degree of difficulty with what's on the table before us tonight in terms of differentiating between the two motions. Where I find the first motion is quite specific and asks that these 49 members in this room ask for something specific from central government, I think that's really useful. I think it's helpful for the people of Thurrock to know that we are asking questions on their behalf that we are not accepting just what is happening. Uh, we all know that there are two options that have happened within Thurrock. The council has either been defrauded or there has been significant negligence. And, and I'm sure that that will come out at some point in the future. I'm well aware there is a significant internal investigation that is still ongoing. Um, but I just find this a little bit distasteful in that it appears to me to be um, the members on the um, ruling group just trying to take a little bit of credit so that at some point in the future they can say, we asked for this, we did this, we did that. <coughs> Are we not above that now? There's a perfectly good motion from the leader of the opposition that says everything that we need to know. It actually is very specific. It says that 49 or 46 of us who are here ask the Secretary of State to hold an independent inquiry. It's very specific. Councillor Jeffries, as erudite as usual, um, but he welcomes the Secretary of State for sort of going along with something that's already happening maybe, but we don't know, we're not quite sure, but probably it is what it is. I, I see no reason why we shouldn't be sharp-edged to the point and as an authority and as councillors, we stand up and say, we in Thurrock want to know exactly what happened. We want to be specific about what happened and we want to know who is going to be held to account. And I just think that the original motion is much nearer that than the second. Thank you, Councillor Spate. <laughs> Councillor Mahoney. Muldowney. Yes. I do apologise. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'm delighted to be able to speak in favour of the original motion, calling for an independent inquiry into the financial collapse of Thurrock Council and other similar collapses. Most of us here, I hope, will have spent many hours reflecting on how Thurrock Council was able to become mired in quite such a catastrophic financial situation. We've had some answers from the recent BVI report. It's outlined some of the failures of the political and officer leadership of the council and the failures of checks and balances within the council's governance and scrutiny functions. However, what has become increasingly clear is that Thurrock and other councils who have needed government intervention are not just outliers in an otherwise stable and well-functioning local government sector. There are larger factors at work which lie outside of a local council's ability to address. Um, and I would also very much like to see some learning come out of this awful situation that we find ourselves in that could potentially help other councils up and down the country not to make the same mistakes. Um, we know, just touching on austerity for, the moment, for a moment, um, we know from reports from organisations like the Joseph Roundtree Trust that um, the austerity cuts did not fall evenly and in fact fell disproportionately harder on deprived areas than they did on more affluent areas. You know, this is a great injustice, which um, I think just on that basis, we should be having independent inquiries. Um, moving on to the Audit Commission, which was set up in 1983 and for thir around 30 years really delivered on its brief to, um, to uh, 
follow the money, assess the economy, efficiency and effectiveness with which taxpayers' cash was being spent. And to do that without fear or favour, um, the abolition of the Audit Commission was one of the coalition government's early bombshells. And the Audit Commission um, produced over the years value for money, national studies that highlighted best practice, reveal poor performance and provided tools that councils could use to improve. All of those things could have been very useful for us to avoid this disaster. A recent report by the Institute of Government said that multiple, in multiple interviewees reported that the coalition government's decision to abolish the commission was an ideological one that was not based on evidence or an understanding of the regulatory system for local government audit. Um, and even there were, uh, as they were shutting it down in 2014, um, the final elements of the Audit Commission, uh, it was known that it was going to be more costly to the Exchequer than actually to keep it running. So, you know, I think it, we really need to start looking at some of these things in a wider sense and therefore, I urge members to vote in favour of the original motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Snell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, again, I'm in the sort of strange position of agreeing with pretty much everything the opposition members say. Everything that's being called for in the motion is absolutely needed. Um, you know, Everything that went wrong, went wrong for a reason, and it needs to be looked in. Those reasons need to be discovered so that we can learn from that, and you know, hopefully it never happens again. But we're in danger of becoming like the civil faulty of, you know, national or local government, because you know, we, we're asking people to do things they're already doing. I mean, we know that DLUG have actually acknowledged that the government has a role to play in this, in the reasons why some of these councils have failed in such a catastrophic manner. And they are indeed looking into all of these reasons. They've, ju they've just started the process now. So, you know, it's, it, there will no doubt become a proper inquiry coming out of this. Uh, we, we were told just this week, in fact, that, uh, you know, moves are being taken already to, to, uh, to actually look at exactly what this motion is calling for. So all we're saying is, yes, let's look at all of these things. But rather than sort of being a bit of a hector and saying, well, you know, we insist you do it, but it's acknowledging that they are already and saying, look, we welcome this. Please go ahead and do the inquiry, rather than taking a more hectoring tone. But on another point, it, it's actually quite refreshing that, that for a, quite a long time now, that this, this side of the chamber has been sort of lambasted as being sort of the bad guys of the peace, um, and everything was all our fault. And it's nice now to hear the admission that actually, maybe there were other reasons, maybe you know, government and the acknowledgement from the other side that government actually created the conditions where things you know didn't go so well for us all. Um, which, is, which is a pleasant thing to hear. So for a change, we're not just the bad guys on our own. Um, but yeah, I mean, all we're saying is, yes, we want all of these things to happen, but let's not demand something that's already taken place. Thank you. Councillor Kieran, do you wish to speak? Oh, Councillor Worrell. Thanks, Madam Mayor. I'll be brief. Um, I think that what happened was when we got the results for the BVI inspection, councillors across this chamber thought that there was already an inquiry and that we would get some closure on and who did what, who knew what, when, why. Um, and I think that it's for that reason that I actually think that if you're saying that they are doing it, but I've seen no evidence anywhere to say that this process has already started, I've researched it, I've tried to find it. There's nothing that says that the start gun's been sent on doing this. So I think that we should support the first motion, Councillor Kent's motion, and ask to be sent a front of everything that goes forward. You know, there are other councils that have already mm -hmm. been through this and are some way down the road. At the LGA conference, there's councils that are years and years in front of us, and I said, how protected are you from it ever happening again? They said it could happen tomorrow. 
They still don't feel that. And I don't want this council to repeat what we've already been through. I don't want us to work so hard and find some common ground just to find out that in five years' time we've not got where we should. So I think we should be insisting that this council has an inquiry. We should find out who knew what and when they knew it because that's the stuff that's really holding us back and changing five words at the beginning of a motion. Which is, and you're saying the same as us. We just want that inquiry. So please, there's more. We need to stop other councils down the road getting this. Woking's debt is going to be bigger than ours if that could ever really happen. This is crazy that we carry on, you know, just going down the same roads and the councils along behind <coughs> us are making the same, you know, silly mistakes. You know, we've got to say an inquiry is the only way to stop this. And I think that we should be leading from the front and saying, look at us and let's learn from us. We're quite happy for you to come in here and do the inquiry because I certainly will be voting for that. Thank you, Councillor Worrell. <laughs> Councillor Kieran. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I will be sur supporting Councillor Kent's um, motion unamended. Um, on a bigger picture, the UK is one of the most centralised uh, countries in the democratic world. Um, latterly, devolution to the nations and the city regions is an acknowledgement of this democratic deficit. However, local government remains emaciated in this country. It's a combination of a lack of independent and secure financing, and a lack of clear central government support. And it was the advent of the Cameron and Osborne austerity agenda that exposed this parlous state of local government in the UK. The Institute of Government uh, reported that between 2010 and 2020, uh, there was a 40% cut in central government grants. And between 2010 and 2020, spending power fell by 17.5%. This was warned about at the time when we ran the council with Councillor uh, John Kent's infamous graph of doom. Those of us who were around at the time will remember it. And it turned out to be prescient in, and it turned out to be how this um, council ended up landing. From 2016 onwards, the Tories are in charge nationally and locally. And it's from 2016 onwards that really it appears that the Thurrock Tories' job was to cover up the austerity being inflicted upon us by the Westminster Tories. Indeed, in 2018, a previous leader, but the previous leader but one from the other, said, in 22 months, what we have done is we have turned the ridiculous graph of doom upside down into the graph of boom. Rather than boom, the accurate term would be bust. And that's why we can't accept a watered-down version of this motion. We actually want the government to do something, okay? We want the Secretary of State to launch an independent inquiry into austerity, the scrapping of independent oversight, the commercialisation agenda, external auditors, the role of CEOs and senior officers, and central government oversight. By tackling each of these areas of independent inquiry, we can then start to plot a way forward for local authorities in the UK. That's why I urge all members of this council to back this motion. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Arnold. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, a councillor accused the administration of trying to take the glory on this, but I suggest if he revisits the wording, you'll see that it's more in the first motion that that happens, not the second that we're proposing. I too don't disagree with a word that Councillor Worrell and Councillor Kent have said, it, with the exception of writing to the Secretary of State, because I think they are, as, as the leader said, this process is already going on and we can see that in the work programmes that are going on, with the commissioners being here, the deep dives that are being done into it and being reported back to the Secretary of State. So I, I think the wording of the second one is as strong as the first one in what we're asking for, but I think it's already happening. Thank you, Councillor Arnold. Um, leader, as the mover of the amendment, 
Do you wish to have the right of reply? You have four minutes to speak. Yeah. No, you don't. Councillor Kent, do you wish to sum up? You have four minutes again to speak. Thank you. So, Ma Madam Mayor, I, I start with the leaders' uh, comments, and I try, try to, to, to be as fair as I can with them. The, the leader says the government is already doing this, but, but frankly, where is the evidence for, the, for that? I've seen no evidence that, that the, the government is actually carrying out any sort of inquiry into what's happened here and in Woking and in Northamptonshire and in Slough and in Croydon. There may be individual pieces of work that are being done in different places, but there is nothing that's comprehensive, cohesive and joined up that looks across the piece and gets a deep dive into what's happened in each of those authorities and has a look for the commonalities. And I think that's really important. He goes on to say uh, that the best value inspection uh, has gone part of the way. But I repeat, the best value inspection was an inspection, not an inquiry. And if we go back to the... Uh, um, early September last year, what did the minister uh, do when he commissioned the inspection? He said it's an inspection of the compliance of the authority known as Thurrock Council with the requirements of part one of the act in relation to that authority's functions in respect of governance, audit, internal and external, risk management, overview and scrutiny functions of that authority and their impact on service delivery. This is in order to assess the extent of the failure of that authority to comply with its best value duty beyond the management of financial resources and to make recommendations to mitigate the risk to service delivery that any further failure may have. That is not an inspection that gets under the skin of what happened here, what were the causes and why it <coughs> happened. Uh, and I still think that's really what we needed. Uh, Councillor Snell, as ever, uh, I agree with all you've said, uh, but actually when, when I'm not going to agree with you and not, not going to vote with you. Uh, I, I, I think Councillor Snell was just a little bit disappointed that for once they're not the bad guys. Uh, so just to make him feel better, the best value inspection report said that there was dereliction in political and managerial leadership. Yeah. There was a lack of openness and transparency, a culture of insularity and complacency a state of unconscious incompetence, that cabinet members asked too few questions and provided too little challenge to officers. And Councillor Spate just, just hit the nail on the head. What we're seeing tonight is nothing more than political games. It just demonstrates that they haven't moved on. Uh, they remain insular, inward-looking, contemptuous of other parties, contemptuous of other members and contemptuous of the residents. Uh, Madam Mayor, I am pleased to move the motion. I think that an overarching inquiry into what's happened here and in other authorities is much, much needed. And if I can have five members standing, I'll ask for a requisition vote. Thank, Thank you, members. So, as I said before, because obviously the digital bit hasn't all collected up, um, Mr. Bolter will actually ask us one by one which way we're going to vote, so you can see how it's all coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, I, I read Council saying this is voting for the amendment, the leader's amendment. We're voting for the amendment first. It's just so you know exactly what you're voting for. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Abbas. For. Councillor Allen. Against. Councillor Anderson. For. Councillor Arnold. Deborah Arnold, sorry. For. Sorry. Councillor Paul Arnold. For. Councillor Byrne. Against. Councillor Carter. For. Councillor Cecil. Against. Councillor Chukwa. Against. Councillor Collins. For. Councillor Cockshall. For. Councillor Duffin. For. Councillor Fish. Against. Councillor Gledhill. For. Councillor Green. Against. Councillor Howden. For. Councillor Hartstein. Against. Councillor Hooper. 
Councillor Horrell. Against. Councillor Jeffries. For. Councillor Johnson. For. Councillor Kelly. For. Councillor Cathy Kent. Against. Councillor John Kent. Against. Councillor Kerrin. Against. Councillor Lydiard. Against. Councillor Little. For. Councillor Ben Maney. For. Councillor Jackie Maney. For. Councillor Manwa. Against. Councillor Massey. Against. Councillor Maurice Cook. Councillor Maldowney. Against. Councillor Onanaji. Councillor Panjala. Against. Councillor Pierce. For. Councillor Piccolo. For. Councillor Polly. For. Councillor Raper. Against. Councillor Redcell. For. Councillor Rigby. For. Councillor Sammons. Against. Councillor Shinnick. Against. Councillor Snell. For. Councillor Spate. Against. Councillor Spillman. For. Councillor Watson. Against. And Councillor Worrell. Against. If you could just wait one moment. At the moment, I believe it is 24 and 24. So using my vote, I will go for four. Thank you. Hang on. Excuse, no, excuse me. Please, now, what we're going to do, vote on the... Right, we're now going to vote. As the amendment is carried, I will now ask you to vote on the amended substantive motion. So you can use your electronical thing now.
Right, um, again, it is no one changed their minds and it is deadlock and I vote for, so it's now 22, 23. Madam. Can you hang on a moment, please, while I'm just taking advice? Right, Councillor Spate. Uh, Madam Mayor, un unless my hearing is deficient, which you may well be, I'm sure the first vote was 24 24. Yeah. We've now got 22 22. Does that mean four people have not voted because there's nobody abstained? Uh, just for clarification purposes. I agree, Councillor. And Councillor Polly, you wanted to speak? Yeah, just to say that we, we had a little bit of. Um, no, not controversy, but we, we, some of the members are not familiar with the, the, the voting, the new system, and where the green, um, the green column come up, they, they couldn't see that there was a plus button underneath it. So I, th I think that it was... Um, yeah, but that means user error, four of user you. Error. Four of you still haven't voted. So we're just going to go on. Hang on, Councillor Shinnick. Yeah, Madam Mayor, because there's a glitch in the system tonight, could we do a vote by hand? No, because it's, it's going to be the same. Yeah, it's the same. And, you know, so it's... I think I'll move on because I don't know how I could cope with any more of this thing. Right, motion... Oh, hang on. I'd like to take out Councillor Kent, sorry. Madam, Madam Mayor, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, and I don't want to drag this out any longer than necessary, but the Best Value Inspector report was very, very clear that the way that decisions were taken at this council leaves something to be desired. Decide, what yeah. you've just said is that there appear to be uh, four people that haven't voted, but we'll just draw a veil over that and move on because we all knew what the outcome was going to be. I'm afraid that isn't good enough. You're quite... I... You're quite right, Councillor Kent, and I do apologise for that. So, where are, do we think, the other... Would it not be easier today just to all put your hands up and do, do a count then? I know you did, so now... Right. Matt, uh, just on a point of order, I don't remember anywhere in the Constitution where it talks about compulsory voting. If somebody can't work two buttons in front of them, they have the right not to vote as well. Sorry, Councillor Duffin, I didn't quite understand your point. Well, the point opposite was if people haven't voted, the system's obviously wrong, as if it's the technology's at fault. People are not forced to vote. That is their choice. Well, then they just press the abstain, abstain vote. Councillor Kent. Madam Mayor, Councillor Duffin is, is, of course, right. Nobody is forced to vote. You have four options. You can vote for, you can vote against, you can abstain, and you can refuse to vote. What we don't know through this system is whether somebody is exercising their right not to vote. And as there is no clarity over that, I, I think we should do it in, in the conventional way. Right, so what I'm going to suggest... Hang on, can you all be quiet? All those against, put your hands up, please. And keep them up so they can count them. Councillor Allen, there's no need to stand. Can you sit down, please? I can see you. All right, put your hands down. Did count? Right, so all those in favour now, put your hands up. And can you leave them up until they've counted them? Right. 
Right, so you can all put your hands down now. And I've got the casting vote. As I said, they've all got 24, 24. No one's abstained and no one has used their right not to vote. Um, and I'm using my cast in vote four, so that's 24 25. Thank you. Item 16. Motion to Councillor Watson. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yes. Uh, Councillor Watson, do you, you wish to propose and then speak on your motion as printed? on page 43 of the... Okay. Uh, can you just hang... No, I can't, mate. Uh, Madam yes, Mayor. you can for a minute. I've just got Councillor... I'm speak... Can you all be quiet? Councillor Spate, I'd already began speaking to Councillor Watson, and I'm going to continue speaking to Councillor Watson. Councillor Watson, right. As I said, would you like to speak on your motion as printed on page 43 of the agenda? You have five minutes to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't think I've ever been in a meeting like this before, um, so please bear with me. So we have seen on the media regarding the closure of the ticket, the ticket offices, and today they have said that they would extend the consultation to September. So all those that haven't done the consultation, please do so. My motion is as follows. Southwark Council notes with concern the news that the Department for Transport and the 13 train operating companies it manages has announced plans to close almost all the staff ticket offices in England. That's totally nearly 1,000. Following changes to the government guidance related to ticket office opening hours and operations, statutory consultation began on the 5th of July and will now end in September. Thought Council believes that ticket office provides a vital service to our residents using the stations at Stamford La Hope, Ockendon, Perthley on Thames, Tilbury and East Tilbury and support passenger safety, security and accessibility. Having a central place in the station for people requiring advice and assistance provides certainty and confidence for customers who may struggle to otherwise locate station staff and also act as a point of safety for passengers. At many stations, access to facilities such as toilets and waiting rooms is reliant on the ticket office staff. Thorough Council is concerned the closure of ticket office will disproportionate affect disability, deaf and older residents in the Thorough, as well as those with poor literacy and IT skills or on low incomes. Council also notes the possible implications for current staff, station staff and believes that the closure of ticket offices could lead to de-staffing or growl stations. I am there asking for the Managing Director Chief Exec to write to the Secretary of State for Transport expressing thorough Council's con con op oppositions to the possible closure of the staff rail ticket offices and in particular those ticket offices at Ockendon, East Tilbury, Tilbury, Stamfordley Hope and Perthley on Thames. Also, can the Managing Director and Chief Executive to write to C2C expressing the Council's opposition to any plans to close the staff ticket offices at those stations? I think, it, Madam Mayor, that it just speaks volumes that these services are vital to our residents, especially those that are vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watson. I will now return to Councillor Spade to find out what the point of order he was going to say. The point of order, Madam Mayor, is that it is, we are judged and the members, what goes on, it's all put down as a matter of record. You arbitrarily just decided that the vote was 45, uh, sorry, 25, 24. That's a really amazing thing to happen seeing there's only 48 councillors in this room. It was 24, 24 and decided by the mayor's casting vote, not 25, 24. Can we please get these things right? Talk about walking into incompetence. Madam Mayor, just I'd like to put a point of order there. Add them up, Councillor Spate. With the Mayor's casting vote, it is 25-24. Um, Councillor Spate, I don't think I am incompetent. I must be being here. Oh, God, dealing with you lot. Um, I know. 
Councillor Spake. God. Councillor Watson, thank you for your motion. Is it seconded? Oh, Councillor Muldoney, would you like to talk now or would you like to speak later? I would like to reserve my right to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Would, would any other councillor like to speak? Councillor Fish. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> oh, sorry, I am being incompetent now. I think I've lost the will, as I said. I've, I've now received an amendment of this motion from Councillor Ben Maney, and this has been tabled. Is this amendment seconded? What is the amendment, actually? Councillor Howden seconded it. So, Councillor Maney, you have four minutes to speak on your amendment. I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can I just check, Madam Mayor, would you like me to read the amendment, or is it taken as printed? Um, Take it as printed, right. Take it as printed, I think, tonight, because you. otherwise you'll be here. Just before I do, in that case, can I just point out that um, my uh, amendment doesn't mention Chafford 100. There's an obvious reason why Grays isn't mentioned, but I think, just for clarity, Chafford 100 should also be mentioned on the list of stations. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, I think most members will understand fully why the announcement that staff ticket offices could be closed across the now, now rail network in England is controversial. Such a move would represent a fundamental change, and many passengers, especially the elderly and vulnerable, will need reassurance. It is right that we as members challenge C2C and ministers alike to make sure that the needs of all our residents are met and none feel excluded from the rail network. At the same time, Madam Mayor, we, need to, we, need, we should not close our mind to the facts nor the benefits which could arise from the proposals. Rather than make a hard judgment here tonight, I believe it is right to await the outcome of the consultation which has now been extended to September, whilst at the same time holding those behind the plans to account. As I'm sure you will agree, Madam Mayor, we should certainly not allow ourselves to become the mouthpiece of the trade unions, whose primary concern is their members' interest. The same unions who often use the pretext of public interest when commencing their latest round of damaging industrial action. The fact is, Madam Mayor, the way people purchase rail tickets has changed dramatically. In 2022-23, around one in 10 transactions occurred at a ticket office, down from one in three just a decade earlier, and this now equates to just 13% of total revenue. Passengers are increasingly opting to use more convenient means of purchasing tickets, including online, via apps or vending machines. C2C itself plans to roll out barcode tickets that can be brought in advance of travel, alongside its launch of contactless ticketing. The Conservative government is also accelerating plans to overhaul Britain's railways, ending the fragmentation of the past and bringing the network under single national leadership in the form of Great British Railways. This too will include a more simplified ticketing system, including the ability to purchase tickets from a single website, ending the current confusing array of train company sites. All of this will almost certainly reduce further demand on the outdated ticketing system. We should also bear in mind that many thorough ticket offices are already a reduced facility, meaning for most of the day passengers must buy tickets and navigate stations without any ticket staff. For example, Madam Mayor, in East Tilbury, the latest one can buy a weekday travel, a, a weekday travel via an office is 12.20pm. In Ockenden, it is just 11.05am and both stations have no Sunday coverage. Worse still, at Perfleet in Councillor Watson's own ward, ticket offices close at 9.50am and do not open at all at weekends. We are told that the plans would see staff move from behind glass screens and placed in public areas of rail stations in order that more enhanced customer help can be provided.